We're going to look at special factoring, specifically in this video, how to recognize a perfect square trinomial. So a perfect square trinomial, let's just first talk about what it is before I tell you what they, what they look like uh, in terms of recognizing one that's out in the wild. A uh, perfect square trinomial could be something like x minus 4 quantity squared. Because if we were to multiply this out, that would be x minus 4 times x minus 4. Uh, the, the product of this thing will be a perfect square, right? Because a perfect square is something that has a rational root. And this hypothetically is rational. OK, so this would be x squared minus 4x minus 4x plus 16, which would be x squared minus 8x plus 16. So this 8, uh, x squared minus 8x plus 16, that would be an example of a perfect square trinomial. <clears throat> so again, what it means is that when we factor it, it factors and we get a perfect binomial that can be squared. We have two types of perfect square trinomials. One is we see here when we have subtraction. I'm actually going to do that one second. The first one is when we have addition. So we know we have a perfect square trinomial when the first term is squared. The middle term is the product of the two uh, roots doubled. And the third term is something squared. So the first term is a perfect square. The last term is a perfect square. And the middle term is twice the product of the roots of those perfect squares. That's how we know we have a perfect square trinomial. And this will factor into x plus y quantity squared. This is when we have addition. So that's not what we saw in the example I just put up. That would be if we have x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. So the difference here is that it changes the sign in the binomial. So that would be x minus y quantity squared. So anytime you come across a, a factoring, if you see that the first term's a perfect square, which, uh, yeah, and you see that the last term's a perfect square, check to see is the middle term the roots of the two, the first and last term, doubled. And if it is, then you have a perfect square trinomial. Now, you can get away with not knowing these formulas for something that's nice. Like in our first example, if you don't know the formula, that's fine because that's relatively nice to factor anyway. So either way, whether you do target product, target sum, or you know the formula, won't be that bad. It will get bad when we see something like this. 25x squared minus 40xy plus 16y squared. If you try to do your target product, you're talking about 400, 25 times 16. You don't want to sit there and list factors of 400. That's terrible. So instead, just see if it's a perfect square. Hopefully it is, because that will be a huge time saver in, for, for all of these problems. OK, so we're going to factor each of these. We are going to use these formulas just to get good practice with them. So in A, we have x squared minus 10x plus 25. So here's what we do. We want to make sure it's a perfect square trinomial. Is the first term a perfect square? And we say, yes, it is. Uh, its root is x. So I'm just going to say root x. Is the last term a perfect square? Yes, 25 is a perfect square. It has a root of 5. Now we have to check the middle term. So is the middle term, if we take the two roots and multiply them and double it, does that give us the middle term? So x times 5 is 5x. Doubled is 10x. We do have 10x. It's minus, so that indicates to us that our perfect square, that the binomial will have subtraction in it. It does work. So the system works. That means that this will factor into x minus 5 quantity squared. Let's look at letter B. For letter B, if you don't like the fact that the 64 is first, you can, you can move it. It doesn't. If you just switch these two terms, they're both positive, so that's fine. If you're happy with it being first, that's fine. I'm pretty happy with it being first, so I'm going to leave it. All right, is 64 a perfect square? Yes, it is. Its root is 8, so I'm just going to put an 8 down here. T squared is a perfect square. Its root is t. So now the question is, t times 8 doubled, does that give us that middle term? Yes, it does. I see the subtraction, which just indicates that we're going to have subtraction in our um, bi uh, binomial. So that would be 8 minus t quantity squared. And interestingly, if you did flip it around and put the t squared first, the t minus 8 quantity squared is actually going to be give you the same value. So kind of interesting how that works out. Very rare subtraction thing that, that pans out. So if you put t minus 8 quantity squared, that's fine too. For letter C, we have 25x squared minus 40xy plus 16y squared. Is 25x squared a perfect square? Yes, it is. It has a root of 5x. 
Over here is 16y squared a perfect square. Sure, it has a root of 4y. If we multiply the two roots, 5x times 4y would be 20xy, and double it, we end up with that middle term of 40xy. There's a subtraction which indicates that our um, binomial will have subtraction. And the binomial will be the root of the first minus the root of the second quantity, or sorry, the root of the third quantity squared. So the first root minus the root of the third term quantity squared. Letter D, again, here you would not want to do target product, target sum. That would be a nightmare. Um, 49W squared, that's a perfect square, and its root is 7W. 25, we've already talked about being a perfect square of 5. If we multiply 7W and 5, we get 35W. Doubled would give us 70W. So it is a perfect square, and it would be 7W plus 5 quantity squared. All right, letter E, we have 121 B squared plus 132 B C plus 36 C squared. 121 B squared, it has a root of 11 B. 36 C squared has a root of 6 C. If we multiply 11 B to 6 C, we get 66 B C. Doubled would be 132 B C. So it works out, it's a positive there. So it would be 11 B plus 6 C quantity squared. All right, last but not least, we had to mix it up. Now we have a first term of x plus 5 quantity squared plus 4 times x plus 5 plus 4. So is x plus 5 quantity squared a perfect square? Absolutely. It's root x plus 5. Is 4 a perfect square? Yeah, it has a root of 2. If we were to multiply these two, now I notice that this is still factored, so I'm actually just going to leave it in my head as 2 times x plus 5 and double that, well, 2 times 2 would be 4, we do end up with the correct middle term. Yay! So this is a perfect square. The first root is x plus 5, and the second root is 2, quantity squared. We probably now want to clean this up a little bit. We don't really want to leave it as x plus 5 plus 2, because we can add 5 and 2. So we're just gonna, I'm just going to come over here and rewrite it as x plus 7, quantity squared.